Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for the full moon eclipse chart. A full moon eclipse in Virgo. Oh, excuse me, it's kind of early. Um, and it is at uh, three degrees of Libra. Before I really get into this, I wanted to, I, I forgot to mention a couple of things like uh, that new, well, first of all, that new moon eclipse that we just had on March 8th, I really got a lot of insights into. And it was conjunct the Chiron and everything, and I really had, um, but it was also conjunct uh, or near my natal Chiron and Pisces. So, you know, it was these uh, these things that I've been wounding myself over, these deep emotional wounds that I have, and I really had some big insights about it. But even backing it up further than that, that the last full moon that we had on triple twos, um, that was February twenty second. Um, it was funny because it was in Virgo, and Virgo rules six house of health, but that's also the house of pets. And on social media, there was so many people, four people had to put their pet down, their dogs down. And one other person I knew also was just almost lost their dog, what they pulled through. And, um, you know, that was the sixth house of health. So that's interesting. I mean, in pets, so that's interesting. I wonder if any of you had any similar experiences. That was triple twos, 222, and then March 8th, of course, was the um, the other one, the new moon eclipse. So this is the counterpart. We have the new moon eclipse, and now we have the full moon eclipse. We always have, you know, two in every season, usually. You know, they run together like this. It's not the opposite, though, because the opposite would have been the Virgo. It's, it's in Libra. But, um, so, you know, it's Full moon eclipses, the first thing that comes to mind just from astrology 101 teaching kind of stuff is something could be eclipsed out of your life. And that's true. And if you want to like relate it to that Virgo with the pets, uh, Libra is seventh house of partnerships and relationships. So sometimes, you know, some partnerships could be um, ending. But, you know, I just kind of have a different vibe about this uh, this one. I mean, but that could be true for people, totally. Um but what I get about it, because the other thing that a full moon does, a full moon is a culmination, but a full moon shines a light on things. And I just get more of the vibe like this is going to shine a light on some Libra things, Libra issues. And um, as opposed to um, Aries, the sun is in Aries at three degrees and the uh, moon is in Libra at three degrees. And what I feel like, you know, and you just watch this stuff with this politics, like these Trump rallies, everybody's beating the hell out of each other and stuff. And that would be like Aries, like we're going to fight, we're the warrior, Mars is the warrior energy, we're going to fight each other. And then Libra, the opposite of that is uh, the cooperation, we're going to cooperate. Um, we're going to be kind. What I'm feeling is we could look at our own lives and be like, well, how can I be more cooperative? How can I be more kind? Because Libras are kind. They don't like to hurt people's feelings. They're not r gruff or rough. It's Venus. Venus likes to shine a light on the beautiful things. Look at the, the beauty in life. Um, how can I be more cooperative? How can I be more kind? How can I be uh, more fair? Libra rules justice which is the scales of balance. Libras can see every side of the issue, not just pounding home my side, my I'm right, I'm right, and I'm going to beat the hell, and I kick their ass and throw them out if they don't like what I have to say. You know, no. Libra is a totally different energy. And I feel like that, you know, it kind of is just sitting there all by itself. I mean, it's not conjunct anything. There's a whole cluster down here. We've got Mercury conjunct the sun, so it's opposing the sun. But just the moon itself, it's sort of sitting there all by itself. I mean, Lilith is up here at 23 degrees, and then the nodes is down here at 21 Virgo. So that's, you know, that's already 10 degrees out there. So it's just kind of sitting there by itself, like pristine. You know, it just feels like it's pristine and crystal, like things could become crystal clear. You know, before you accuse me, take a look at yourself. Because um, Aries is the opposite, is that me, me, mine, I, this is the other, the partnership, the other person, the seventh house. So, I mean, partnerships are going to come into play for many people. Yeah, that's going to be a big thing. Um... 
but I get more again that it's just like shining a light on how can I be more Libra like how can I be more considerate kinder these are the vibes that I'm getting off of this uh, this moon or maybe how we could use this eclipse moon in a positive way okay so it is um, let's get into this a little more about the this stuff it is um, this opposing Mercury so there's talking and Libra is energy is very communicative too it's air you know it's air is in the mind it's mental it's speaking it's talking and we've got Mercury involved which is an air uh, you know rules Gemini an air planet air placement third house third seventh these are interactive houses there's words for it, but I can't think of the official word for the, those houses. But anyways, um, so talking, speaking, um, deliberating, um, the word deliberating comes to mind. I think that there's going to be, a, there could be a really open flow of communication. And things could really get talked out if if we allow that energy in, you know. And if you don't allow that energy in, then it could be eclipsed out of your life, you know. But I think that the lines of communication and really communicating with people can be, um, you know, emphasized. The other thing about uh, Libra energy is they try to look at th they look at the bright side. That's Libra, you know. Let's look at the bright side of things. There's always an upside to everything, you know. I, I say this all the time in tarot, and it's true with planets in astrology too. It's not like oh, this is a good card and this is a bad card. I mean, granted, yeah, some are kind of good and some are, are not so good. But there's always a positive side to it. Or people look at Saturn in astrology and think, oh, Saturn's bad, ooh, big bad Saturn. <laughs> and really, uh, there's always a positive side to it. So this full moon in Libra could really be about like, what looking at the positive side of things. What's positive? And the reason that keeps coming to mind, too, is because in, we have this Venus conjunct Neptune. And that can be really dreamy and some might say even spacey. But it is about um, positive, and I'm hearing, you know, John Lennon, you know, you may call me a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. I mean, that's perfect for this, uh, for the upside of this eclipse, what, what this, up, this eclipse could be, you know. And that's what I feel about it overall. Uh, let's see, what else is going on? Yeah, we've got this uh, Sun and Aries conjunct Mercury. Well, that's great for speaking and communicating too. But Aries energy sometimes you can it can be too quick to speak, too quick to blurt out something. You know, just um, say something with without thinking. You know, whatever you know, whatever pops into your mind comes out your mouth. Sometimes that could be what it is. So maybe we need to you know a caution on this could be you know. Maybe we need to, you know, think before we speak. You know, that could be prevalent. Uh, this south node stuff is just still really active. And, and we do, we're moving into the Aries energy. And we've got Uranus, Sun, and Mercury there. But look, at we still have this huge splay. And it, besides the uh, Venus-Neptune conjunction, which gives it that dream. That's so creative. That's so creative. That's so spiritual. That's so seeking the beauty or finding. This, to me, this is about finding the beauty in life. It really is. I'm on a second you drink. Sorry, um, but this South Node Chiron is exact. It's on. It's on, baby. And now uh, Ceres is in there too. So it just you know these wounds, like I said on that Pisces thing. I had some really deep uh, moments about uh, you know some enlightening things came to me uh, regarding wounds, how I've been wounded or my areas of where I feel my pain or my wounds. And um, I've, I had some big enlightenments about it. And that could still be going on big time. And uh, with Ceres here, uh, you know, how can we uh, nurture these wounded areas of ourselves? Because this is where this, this attitude of, uh, I'm going to, you know, kick their ass and throw them out of here, and this, these huge ego things... This is where this comes from, you know, it comes from these wounds. 
these wounded ch children, these wounded children grow up to be, you know, turn into bullies and grow up to be the, the type of people that are, you know, wanting to make war and wanting to uh, be aggressive. So the solution to that may be going in and finding the root of the problem, you know, the root of this deep wound. And there's some beautiful energy here to really have some major healing. There really is, if you want to do that. Or you could lash out and possibly alienate people and partnerships and relationships could end, be eclipsed out of your life. So the ball's in your court, you know, the ball's in your court. What are you going to do with this energy? I mean, I really feel that this is uh, tremendous for shining a light on some really beautiful stuff here. Okay, what else is going on in this chart? Um, you know, I'm really excited because my rock and roll tarot deck is coming. Let's sum up kind of early doing this reading because it's uh, coming. My test print is coming after two weeks. The deck was done two weeks ago, <laughs> and I wanted to uh, release it on that new moon eclipse, but it's coming today, so... I'm kind of a little distracted because I just can't wait to see it and get it in my hands. I know that there's a couple of little mistakes on it, just tiny little mistakes that I don't even know will show up in printing. And if it's not too noticeable, I'm probably just going to release it anyway because I can't wait anymore. <laughs> but so maybe if you, you buy it at that point before I go back and fix it and resubmit it because you have to go through the whole waiting for the test print thing again. You know, maybe you'll have it. It might be a, you know, not a collector's item, but you know what I mean. Get it with the, the early flawed, the first edition flawed version or something. <laughs> uh, but anyways, let's look at some of this other stuff. Because I'm trying to talk about this Saturn. What is that Saturn doing anyway? It's trying to run us. Okay. This is this ongoing uh, deal. We've, I might have talked about it before, but I'm, I'm compelled to kind of talk about it again. Um, so, oh, but Investa is... Um, making an aspect to that with the Taurus. One of those odd aspects, too. So with this Vesta and Ceres being so activated, you know, this could be a time of great abundance before we get into the other stuff. This could be a time of great abundance, of, um, like, nurturing. Oops, I got the phone, but I can turn it off. Let me turn it off. There. I got a different phone. I can turn it off. Um, sorry about that. A lot of gain can be made. You know, you, you can, it's like coming through the fire and coming out on the other side. That's what I kind of feel like. It com Coming through, well, the fire might not be, well, it is fire energy, but I, you know what I mean? Like this deep, there's all this deep wounding stuff with this Chiron and everything and deep healing like I talked about in the last reading. And it's, even, it's still coming in stronger now. It's even closer. It's exactly conjunct. By three minutes, it's out, 47 and 50, and we've got Ceres in here. So it's like there could be great benefit from diving in that pain. Um, there could be great abundance of spirit and abundance of the soul and uh, feeling better and not wanting to lash out anymore because this feels like very much lashing out. Okay, but uh, let's get into this Saturn-Uranus thing because I'm compelled to talk about it. So it's, it's also in fire energy. You know, it's uh, in Sagittarius and in Aries. We're talking fire energy. Trines are always harmonious and they're always positive and they're always able to get things done. And fire is the signs of action. The fire people or the rods people in the tarot, these are people of action. These are the cards of action, the planets of action. So it's time for action. It's time for change. And... Um, it's time, it's freedom. We, we've been talking about this forever with the Pluto square Uranus, right? And that's still an orb also. And because Pluto is, um, you know, big change and it's in the Earth sign of Capricorn, which is Saturn's ruler. So these are tied together too because Saturn rules Capricorn, okay? So we're talking about Saturn, Saturnian or Saturn energy and we're talking about Uranus, freedom. And Uranus and Aries, a new, a new way, the new way, the new road, the trailblazer. But what we're being released from on twofold here is Saturn and Capricorn energy, this old paradigm, the old um, patriarchal um, take by force. You know that that's comes to mind strong. Uh, the 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 strict parent 
who you're, you're gonna you're gonna conform because I'm I'm bigger and stronger than you, and I, I'm older than you. I have more authority than you, so therefore you'll conform to me, whether my ideas or my ways or my things are right or wrong. You you will conform, and uh, in the sign of. Um, Sagittarius, it's through our religious and our philosophy, so that's a big thing that's coming forth from this and dawning of this new age and people breaking free of old religious um, constraints and, you know, those that don't uh, change the religions that don't try to change and, and come into the modern day are probably going to be, you know eliminated and forgotten I mean, that's just the truth, I hate to say it but it's true so religions and philosophy and our way of thinking about those types of things, religion and philosophy. You know, these um, ninth house matters, you know, uh, abstract concepts, I guess you could say. Uh, so they've got to change and they've got to come into the new world. And as Pluto went into Capricorn, uh, Pluto's always going to change something. So it's changing the hierarchy and the structure. But Pluto also rules sexuality. And we've come so far with, uh, during the time that Pluto's been in uh, Capricorn, because Capricorn is also the government and the structure of things, you know. Look at gay marriage is legal everywhere now, you know. Uh, our views on sexuality are, are changing during this time, too. Well, maybe not our views, but um, the constraints of society, the Saturnian uh, ways of, I'm going to you know, be over you and I'm going to hold you down. And you're below me, and I'm going to hold you back. It's like, pff, no, you're not. And um, and Uranus is the internet too, and it, every, everybody's joined through Uranus, uh, the internet and technology. You know, unfortunately, though, it, and it joins people who don't have these high goals in mind either. You know, and it's not funny at all. You know, it. it, it but I, when I was thinking of it originally, I was thinking of you know, um, just all the haters in general you know, the, the the trolls and the haters and stuff, it, it joins them. But it also, that's how ISIS is, you know, doing their business and everything through the Internet. So there's there's up again, back to, there's up and down in everything. And Libra is always about looking at that brighter side. But this is, uh, with the trine energy, we can really make changes that are harmonious. And with fire, it can happen quickly. You know, with the with the Capricorn Saturn energy, we got to deliberate over it forever. And you know, with ju Libra's justice too, Libra's the rules of justice. So there's laws and justice things that could come into play. And with this, you know, this um, Saturn energy, Capricorn Saturn here, you know, it it could be like we got to deliberate forever. You know, or you know, just like uh, they tried all the things that happened to the health care. They spent the whole eight years trying to block the health care plan, and getting nowhere. You know, you know, getting nowhere fast, and then with Uranus and fire energy, these changes could happen really quickly. Did I turn that ringer off all the way? Is it gonna? Um, you know, they can happen really quickly within the blink of an eye, uh, and and make great strides. Not deliberate forever. Not get approval from uh, waiting for the Supreme Court to do it or whatever. Now they're going to block the dude, you know, Obama with the Supreme Court too. But um, And Aries is the youth, youth, and Sagittarius is very youthful. So it's going to be the younger people and the new ideas, you know, not the old paradigm, the old stodgy old um, dudes who are trying to hold everybody back, or you could even say the 1% or whatever, you know. It's going to be the new, and it's not even an age thing. It's about the way we are thinking, you know. It's our mindset. Because there's young people who are very much conformists, and there's older people who are really free and open. So it's not a, a chronological years on earth thing, I don't feel. Um, it's more uh, a state of mind. Uh, because we are, this is a mental thing, as I said before, and Mercury is involved. So it's it's a state of mind. It's 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 in making mental adjustments in in your way of thinking, and being open to seeing things in a new way, being open to um, you know being open to seeing things more fairly, uh, listening to other people's uh, because that's another thing about Libra energy. It's like this debate thing. I'm sorry, I'm turning that ringer all the way off real quick because these phone calls are coming in, 
it's that time of day, Monday morning, and <laughs> I, I don't want to interrupt it anymore. But anyways, you know, it's it's this, um, they're deliberators. Libra is deliberator. Libra is um, uh, having a debate, a healthy debate, an open discussion. This is great for that. But if you're going to be, again, the ball's in your court, if you're going to be very Aryan, and no, I know everything, and I'm right, and kick their asses out of here, they suck, they know nothing, and, you know, not even listen to the information, just go on this nonsense, you know, pick a team. And, you know, this this came to me, too. It's like, why are people like that? Why are people, I mean, I'm not telling, saying anybody vote this way or that way, but just listen to everything everybody has to say. No, I don't want to listen. I don't want to know really what's going on because that would upset my um, my my opinion. And I, I feel like it relates to sports teams. You know, we're so into our sports teams and we got to get all our gear and all our, you know, and we root, root, root for the home team and we're just so... This is... The, I think that we're, we're in, in America... I'm talking America. I know people watch this for, all over and it's... But I, I'm just kind of caught up in a little bit of what's, what's going on with that and I'm just observing and I'm just like you know this is because of our sports mentality they, they people are thinking of this as like a, a sports competition and my team's got to win because we are number one Ugh. you know that kind of stuff that's what I think is kind of happening and that's you know that's not a good way to look at <laughs> Who's handling our world here? You know, who who we're giving the reins to, and and not only that, you know, you gotta vote more than once a fourth of the year. The people who are so yeah yeah got this guerrilla mentality to me, you know, um, they they wake up once of every four years, and they don't listen to what's going on or pay attention the rest of the time. You know, you can't just, oh, well, we voted Obama in and he didn't do anything. Well, that's because Baynard and those dudes were blocking him every step of the way. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to take sides, you know. Uh, I'm not trying to take sides and uh, please don't, brought, you know, hit me with all the political comments. I'm just saying, what, whatever you believe, you got to vote more than every four years. you got to vote these other dudes into, into office that, you know, were out of office, who are not carrying out what policies that you would like to see. And the policies that do you like to see, are, are they really, um, is it about where you are or is it just about some stance that you're taking? Because Aries, you know, Aries, I know Taurus is the bull, but Aries can be pretty bullheaded sometimes. Like, I don't want to hear it. It's just blah, 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 blah. Push, 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 push. So it could be real pushy. Because this can be a real pushy energy. Okay. But again, the ball's in your court. We've got some beautiful stuff here for healing. We've got some beautiful stuff here for creativity. And this Venus-Neptune, come on, this is beauty. This is beauty on the grandest level. So there could be great strides of creativity and beauty going on here. If any of you are creative, trying to solve a problem, a creative problem, whether it's anything, whether it's, you know, artistic or how am I going to rearrange my furniture or how am I going to solve this problem, there could be really beautiful solutions that make everybody happy with Libra. Is everybody happy? <laughs> um... You know, so there could be some really beautiful things that come through on this eclipse moon. A huge light being shined on. And the reason I keep going to Venus, too, is because Libra is ruled by Venus. So there's a lot of Venus energy. So I'm just going to leave it like that. The ball's in your court. Um, you can take it to this extreme. You can be in this um, Aries war-like battling energy. And it'll be a rebel without a cause in a lot of cases. That's what this can be, you know. Or, or you know, my team's gonna win because it's a it's a competition. It's a sports competition. It's not a sports competition, okay? Or you could be open to listening to people's opinions and listening to both sides of the issue, and maybe trying to come up with something fair. And this doesn't have to be the political arena. This could be in your own life. Anything that you're having a conflict with, or that there's two opposing sides, because there's a duality to Libra. There's the two sides of the scale. And it's the, bal it's the balancing act between the two. Okay, everybody, I'm not going to show you all my crap that I usually do because you've seen it all. <laughs> you know, just check the links and you can find out everything. My deck's going to be out hopefully later today. I cannot wait. I'm so stoked to get that. It's coming in the mail. I'm like looking out the window waiting for that mailman to come. So 
I'm so excited to be releasing the deck. Uh, and, you know, this full moon, it's something, you know. Things may be eclipsed out of your life. Um, either it, either A, it's going to be eclipsed out of your life, or B, um, is it worth keeping? Then maybe you want to work on compromise. Compromise could be very big on this Libra moon. All right, everyone. Remember, you're a love, beauty, incarnate. Thanks for donating and doing all the stuff you do for my page and my channel. I really, really appreciate it. Have a great eclipse, and I'll speak to you soon.